yesterday we started discussing the differential pair which is a way of uh, amplifying the difference between two voltages which are defined with respect to ground. assume that both sides have a bias voltage of uh, BICM, so that in the quiescent condition the two transistors have equal currents of I naught by 2 and I naught by 2 and we add some differential excitation like this. Okay. And if I load one side with a resistor RL. A small signal output here will be GMRL by two times VD. Okay. So you can think of uh, buffering this voltage using M1, which is source follower, and applying it to source of M2 or vice versa. And the currents in M1 and M2 are equal and opposite. Okay. So, you can use the output either from M1 or M2 or both. Now, this is equivalent to a common source amplifier. I mean, the gain is of similar order. There we had got minus GMRL, now we have GMRL by 2. They are similar in the sense that we cannot increase the gain beyond a certain point without using an unreasonably large power supply. Okay. So, yesterday we, I mean, we have uh, encountered this problem before and we have also tackled it. The solution is to use an active load, which provides a very high incremental resistance, but does not need a very large voltage drop across the device. Okay. Now, the active load also has to be in uh, saturation region, right. Otherwise, let us say this is the active load device, this is in saturation region at the resistance that you see, the small signal resistance that you see is GDS. It has to be very small. It will be very small only in saturation region. Okay. If it goes to dry out region, even that conductance becomes very big or the resistance becomes very small. Okay. So, you have to maintain everything in saturation region. So, we have to replace this RL with a PMOS active load. And the PMOS active load should be such that its saturation current is what? I naught by 2, right? That is the only way it will remain in saturation region. Otherwise, what happens is if this is more than I naught by 2, then this voltage will keep rising until this goes into triode. If it is less than I naught by 2, then M2 will go into triode. Okay? So, yesterday we saw that. So, this has to be biased at a current I naught by 2. How do we do that? Current mirror. Is that okay? I mean, these are identical also M three and M four. Okay. This is fine. So, we had to have an active load with a saturation current of I naught by 2 and to do that what I have done is to use a current mirror. Right. Any questions so far? There any way you can think of making the circuit more efficient, more efficient meaning using less resources, whether it is current or transistors or hmm. what 
what I mean is, I mean, we have used a current source of I naught to bias the differential pair. We have used the current of I naught by 2 to bias the uh, current mirror for the active load. So, is there some way we can reduce this or? Which one? Sources and gates of which one? No, no, sources of gates of which transistor? M4 and M3 they are connected right, the gates are connected together, the sources are connected together. Oh, then the incremental resistance will be 1 by gm, the gain will be really small. Right? Yeah, see now we are wasting the current in M1 right, it is just going off nowhere. So, why use another I naught by 2 here? If everything was working properly, what would be the current flowing here? I naught by 2. So, I could do that, right? Is not it? So, if everything is working perfectly uh, all right, M 1 and M 2 both carry a current of I naught by 2. I was previously wasting the current in M 1, but I can also use that to mirror. Okay. Now, this is not exactly the same as the previous circuit. Now, I mean we have got some ideas, we have come up with some circuit, we have to go back and analyze this, right. So, let me draw it a little more neatly, the way it is usually drawn. Okay. So, this is what we come up with. So, M 1 and M 2 are matched to each other, M 3 and M 4 are matched to each other. Okay. Again remember that this circuit cannot be used just like this because of its high gain, you cannot use this in open loop, you have to have it in feedback, but we will do all our initial analysis assuming that everything remains in saturation region. Okay. So, now this cell which is very popular. In fact, almost any op amp that you open up and see the first stage will be like this. Okay. It may be with MOS transistors, it may be with bipolar transistors, it may have uh, some more embellishments, but uh, this is what it will be. Okay. And this is basically M 1 and M 2 form a differential pair, M 3, M 4 form a current mirror. So, this is a differential pair with a current mirror load. Okay. So, we will analyze this, but I have to warn you uh, in advance that uh, I mean sometimes there can be lots of subtle things going on here. Okay, I will only show the broad outlines and move on. Okay. Also, when you have this many transistors, right? If you put GM and GDS for every transistor, it is definitely possible to analyze, but still, I mean you have now three different nodes and it gets very messy. Okay. So, we will do it in some systematic way and come up with an incremental equivalent for the entire differential pair. Okay. Again, I do not suggest that you remember that by heart, but you first derive it for yourself and then understand it and then keep using that. Okay. Because I mean let us say in the exam you start putting GM and GDS of every transistor and a full op amp will have a few more transistors, then you will waste a lot of time doing that. Okay. So, understand what the equivalent of this is properly and then use that. And sometimes you get very long expressions, which are only really slightly different from the very approximate expressions, crude expressions, but uh, will take a long time to derive, only confuse you and do not give you any insight. Okay. Any questions about this? At least in principle, what I wanted here was uh, simple. Okay. I have the differential pair M1 and M2, right. If I apply a differential voltage Vd to a differential pair, then the incremental currents in the transistors will be Gm by 2 times the differential voltage. Okay. And just like in a common source amplifier, I want to pass that through some resistor to get an output voltage. And just like in that case, I also want to use an active load, so that the output voltage is large, that is the effective gain is very high. Okay. So, that is all I did. I wanted to make a make an active load. What is an active load? It is basically a current source, a transistor biased in saturation. Okay. The whole idea behind an active load is to get a very large incremental resistance without a correspondingly large voltage drop across it. 
a uh, MOS transistor in saturation, the voltage drop across it is related to the VGS of the device, right? You need VGS minus VT and the incremental resistance is related to lambda of the device, so it is completely independent stuff, okay? And that is what I did, I used M4 as the active load, okay? So, I mean right now I am taking the output from this side because I just thought that I will have a positive gain from VD to the output, right? When I had a resistor here, I had plus GMRL by 2. If I have a resistor on the left side, I would have minus GMRL by 2. So, let me uh, take the output from the right side for now. Now, uh, I have the active load M4 which has to be biased at I0 by 2. Then I noticed that hey, I was wasting the current in M1, why not just use it to bias the active load, that is all, okay? Any questions about the derivation of the topology? Now, let us go through this, uh, I mean I said we want to derive the equivalent circuit of this and we have to do it somewhat systematically. Uh, first of all, I have been saying that we do not operate this ever in open loop, right, because it is a high gain circuit we have to operate it in feedback just like a CMOS inverter or an op amp. But and that is because I mean this symmetry like for instance M1 exactly being identical to M2 and M3 being exactly identical to M4, this will never happen, there will be small deviations, okay. But before we get to all of that negative feedback loop and so on, so let us say I bias it like this, the gates of M1 and M2 are connected to VICM, the same voltage and it is an open loop, it is like this and let us assume that the transistors are exactly matched, okay. What will be the voltage here? Imagine that uh, I mean M1 and M2 are exactly matched. So, if the so that means that for uh, identical operating points, they will have the same GM and GDS and so on. And similarly, M3 and M4 will have same GM and GDS and all this. Okay. What will this be? I mean you have to use the fact that the circuit is perfectly symmetrical, okay. How would you decide? So, let us say the circuit were like this, okay. I have only M1, M2, and M3, okay. So, in this case, what would be this voltage? What would be the current in M1 and M2? I0 by 2. Is that correct? Okay. So, what is that voltage at the drain of M3 or drain of M1? Yeah, what is that? What is that voltage? How would you calculate it? What is that? Yeah, yeah, you have to be a little louder. What? Is that that voltage or is it the VGS of? What is the VGS of M3 or VSG of M3? What is that? Whatever is required to support a current of I0 by 2, how much is that? The VSG has to be VTP plus square root I0 by KP, okay. Assuming I0 by 2 flows here, I0 by 2 flows there. So, this voltage is VDD minus that voltage, okay. So, in this case it is very easy to calculate the voltages, right, because if you know that I0 by 2 is flowing, essentially what we have is a small incremental resistance connected to the drains, it is very easy. But what is it in this case? Now, we know the voltage here, what will it be in this case? How will you reason it out? What 
what is this voltage what is that voltage it will be the same why ok, but uh, why do you say that yeah I understand the voltage here is what we calculated V D D minus V T P minus square root I naught by K P. Why is the voltage here exactly the same as that? Hmm? Yeah, okay. V S D of both are the same. Yeah. This is a this voltage here is unrelated to any V S G as far as I can tell. Lambda is not 0, if it lambda is 0 then you will have an ambiguity. Lambda is uh, of course, same for m 1 and m 2 and also m 1 and m 2 are the same as each other, m 3 and m 4 are the same as each other, there is no relationship between m 1 and m 3. Uh, so how do you know currents are equal? Hmm? How do you know? Currents are equal. Yeah, but lambda is not zero, right? You could see the drain current of a MOS transistor is primarily determined by VGS. Okay, but it is also influenced by VDS. So it's possible for two transistors to have the same VGS but different VDS and have slightly different currents. So how do I know that the currents are not slightly different from uh, I naught by two and I naught by two? Yeah, okay, do I do not know, I do not know if it forces, but you do that. Assume that the voltages are different and see if that is possible or not, okay. So, let me let us say you call this V D 1 and this is V D 2 and assume that V D 1 you can calculate if you know how much current is flowing, but let us say V D 1 is not equal to V D 2, what happens then? Is that an acceptable solution or not? So, let us assume that V D 1 is greater than V D 2. What does this mean? M 1 and M 2 have the same source voltage. So, V D S 1 is greater than V D S 2 which implies that the drain current in uh, M 1 is more than the drain current in M 2. Okay. But this is not the only matched pair M 3 and M 4 are also matched. They have the same uh, V S G. So, their drain current any difference is decided only by the difference in V S D. Okay. Now, this thing means that V S D 3 is smaller than V S D 4, right? Because this we said that V D 1 is more than V D 2. So, this voltage is bigger than that voltage. Okay. Now, what does that say for uh, drain currents of M 3 and M 4? This means that I D 3 is less than I D 4, but I D 1 is the same as I D 3, I D 2 is the same as I D 4. So, you cannot have this, right. So, if they are perfectly matched even in open loop, equal currents will be flowing through the transistors and what will be the output voltage? What will be the voltage here? Same V D D minus V T P minus square root uh, I naught by K P. Basically V D D minus V S G three. Which one? Oh, I just uh, I didn't bother to calculate this. <laughs> Actually, I, if I had connected, maybe I should have shown this circuit which by symmetry would also have equal uh, equal V D S as well. But actually, the way I drew it, if I do that the currents will be slightly different. Okay. So, the current here will be slightly more than the current there, but the point I was trying to make was something different. Uh, once you know this current you can find this voltage, whereas in this particular case it is not 
you can't find this voltage by uh, I mean very easily you have to invoke the symmetry argument to uh, say that this will be the same as the other side. This is okay. Where? In this case. So, again, I am assuming non zero values of lambda, right. So, what is VDS2 compared to VDS1? We are more or less or the same. VDS2 compared to VDS1. More, why? Now, obviously, there will be some voltage here, whatever that voltage is, right. So, the voltage here will be more than the voltage there. So, that is all. So, now, VGS is the same, VDS is larger, so the current will be slightly more, ok. But here, what happens is even if you ignore the difference and calculated this voltage, you would not make a very big error. Okay, because the current is slightly different because of this lambda effect, but that will cause a small difference in voltage. Okay, whereas in this case, I mean, you can't calculate it at all. Right. Is this okay? So this is an important thing that if uh, the structure is perfectly symmetrical, although there is no feedback, this voltage will be the same as that voltage. Again, keep in mind that this is just a hypothetical thing where we are assuming perfect symmetry. This will never happen in practice and in practice you have to use negative feedback around the whole structure, ok. Yeah. Why? Brain and gate of M3. Oh, what will be the gate voltage in this case? It is not even set, right? It is only because of feedback that you can set it. both these voltages in quiescent condition ok. Our goal is to find a small signal equivalent for the whole differential pair ok. So, that is what I am that is what I am getting at here ok. It turns out that there are some subtleties involved. So, that is why I am first finding the quiescent output voltage ok. So, now uh, these two are the inputs where you apply the incremental voltage V d by 2 and minus V d by 2. In other words, between these two points you apply an incremental voltage of V d ok. The output is taken from here right and what I will try to do is to obtain the Norton equivalent of this thing. I can do that right. So, if I have any circuit with some sources inside, I can find Thevenin or Norton between the output terminals. In this case, one of the output terminals is ground. When I say this, I mean between this and ground. That is of course, in the incremental domain all this Thevenin Norton work only for linear circuits ok. So, when I say Thevenin equivalent, I mean the Thevenin equivalent of the small signal circuit corresponding to the differential pair. So, that is what I want to do and it turns out that the Norton equivalent is easy to find ok. So, how do you find the Norton equivalent circuit of anything? What is that? How do you do it? What quantities do you find? Huh? input resistance. You have to find the short circuit current ok. So, first of all I have to terminate this in an incremental short circuit of course, without disturbing the bias point ok. 
So, that is the reason I found this voltage. So, what I will do is I will terminate this with a voltage which is V d d minus V t p minus square root I naught by k p. Okay. Is this fine? So, how much current will be flowing here? What is that? How much current will be flowing there? Yeah. 0, why? What is, yeah. So, if you did not do anything, if you did not connect anything, this voltage anyway would have been that, and you connect it that way, no current will flow. Okay. So, this will not disturb the bias point anywhere, that is my, uh, that is the idea. Okay. Now, I mean, this is again in the, uh, this is. 0 quiescent current. So, my operating point is still the intended one, which is uh, where I have I naught by 2 I naught by 2 flowing in the two halves of the circuit. Okay. So, that is how I would like to operate the differential coil. This is in the quiescent condition. Okay. So, now I apply these increments V d by 2 and minus V d by 2. Okay what will be the incremental current flowing here? Please find this. Okay. So, I apply incremental voltages V d by 2 and minus V d by 2 to this or in other words basically I apply an increment of V d across the differential pair, find the incremental current. Okay. Now, in this case, model the transistors using only G m's. Okay. Okay. If you throw in uh, all the GDSs, the answer will not be very different, but you will just get messy expressions. Okay, so please draw the small signal equivalent of this and find the incremental current flowing in the short circuit. That is the Norton current of this whole thing. Okay, is this clear? What I was trying to do was to find the incremental equivalent of the whole differential pair, uh, the Norton equivalent, and for that you have to draw the small signal picture of this model each transistor by its GM. Now remember what is the what is the current flowing in each of these branches I naught by 2. Okay. So, m 1 and m 2 will have identical small signal parameters right they have the same operating point they are matched and call the g m of that just g m 1. Okay. So, g m of m 1 and m 2 it is easy to denote them both by g m 1. Similarly, m 3 and m 4 will have the same g m s. So, denote them both by g m 3. Okay, and please evaluate the small signal equivalent, current, small signal current flowing into the short circuit. This I say is V d d, we have been using this notation for some time. This means that there is a voltage source of value V d d from there to ground. Okay. Just go back to the basics and draw the equivalent circuit M 1, M 2, M 3, M 4. Okay and the output is terminated in something, I will call it V term, you know what it is V d d minus V s g of m 3. Now, what happens to each of these things in uh, the incremental equivalent? What happens to this V i c m? It will be 0, right? it is a just a fixed bias. Okay. So, the gate of m 1, then we have m 1 itself this is at V d by 2 or you can even call it V 1, I think you will get exactly the same result. And the source, I do not know, let me just call it V s. This whole thing is M 1 and what will this current be? G M 1 times V d by 2 minus V s. Actually, this is very important. I see a lot of you writing the current source symbol without writing anything next to it. Okay. If you are very comfortable with circuits, these things will work, but if you are uh, uh, 
making mistakes just be systematic draw every transistor the uh, quantity corresponding to each of the controlled current source and so on ok. And also there is always this tendency of uh, somehow assuming that the source is at ground and writing g m times the gate voltage and things like that ok. So, just be systematic and do it because uh, there is no way I mean you imagine this is the first step if you make this if you make a mistake here you cannot get the right answer I do not see how unless the answer happens to be 0 or something like that and you by some other means you also get 0 ok. And this is the equivalent of m 2 and here we have minus v d by 2. So, what is this current source? What is the value of this current source? G m by 2 sorry g m 1 minus v d by 2 minus v s ok. And now we have m 3 the source is here the drain is here the gate is there ok. So, the controlled current source will be from drain to source. What happens to this line in the equivalent circuit? Shorted where? To ground ok. So, this is also ground and the gate is shorted to the drain ok. So, let me just call this V d 3 or something V g 3 you call it anything you want. What is the current source value? Yeah, G m 3 times V d 3. Then this is also going to the gate of m 4. So, this is m 3 and m 4 ok. What is this current source value? G m 3 times V d 3 and oh, what is this connected to? what is this connected to ground and what is it that we want to find current here ok. That is the not an equivalent current i n ok. So, how many nodes relevant nodes do we have in the circuit? 2. So, we have this and we have that ok. We have to equate this current to this current right. What is the result of that? Huh? What do you get the value of V s to be? 0. G m 1 times V d by 2 minus V s plus G m 1 times minus V d by 2 minus V s is 0 that will tell you that 2 G m times V s is 0 ok. So, this will be 0 ok. So, the reason this is 0 is because we have an ideal current source here ok. So, incrementally this becomes an open circuit as long as that is the case as long as that current source is ideal this voltage here will be the average of these two incremental voltages ok. So, if you have plus V d by 2 and minus V d by 2 you will have 0. If you had V 1 and V 2 you would have plus I mean V 1 minus V 2 divided sorry V 1 plus V 2 divided by 2 ok. So, that part actually makes it very easy if the tail current source is ideal then the tail node voltage will be the average of the input incremental voltages and each of the currents will be basically half of the incremental voltage times g m 1 ok. So, this current what is this current now? How much is it? g m 1 times V d by 2 and here it is what is it? minus g m 1 V d by 2 ok. Now, we also have to equate this current with that current right is not it. So, the current flowing this way is g m 3 times v d 3. So, g m 3 times v d 3 equals g m sorry plus g m 1 times v d by 2 equals 0. So, this tells you that v d 3 is how much minus g m 1 by g m 3 v d by 2 ok. See, what is this? This is a diode connected transistor. What is the incremental resistance of the diode connected transistor? 1 by g m ok. So, it is like connecting a resistance 1 by g m in this branch that is all ok. So, it is not any different from if I had R l here I would have got minus g m by 2 times R l times
times V D. In this case, R L happens to be 1 by G M 3. So, I will have minus G M 1 by G M 3 times V D by 2 that is all. So, that part is actually quite straightforward to calculate, but again if you are getting confused do the systematic thing okay, that will guarantee the correct answer. So, after you get uh, certain level of comfort you can do all these things without probably going through every step of the calculation okay, but do not try to skip steps right at the beginning. So, V D 3 is some value okay. So, what is this current now? We have found everything right, we know this also. How much is that? Same as what? It is basically G M 3 times that number okay, G M 3 times this whole thing. So, this current in this direction is minus G M 1 V D by 2 okay, is this fine? So, what is I n? It is the negative sum of this and that it is G M 1 times V D is this okay. So, actually the equivalent is very simple the not an equivalent current what is G M 1 times V D it is again like a common source amplifier that is all. So, if you had a if you had a single transistor of a transconductance G M 1 and you applied an incremental gate source voltage equal to V D the incremental drain current would be G M 1 times V D. So, that is why I keep saying a differential pair is just a fancy common source amplifier except that you can apply inputs differentially I mean the inputs will be treated symmetrically and so on otherwise it is the same. Now, we can also reason it out from here right I mean I did this so that you get used to the small signal stuff you have to do that sometime. What is the quiescent current here? Quiescent current I naught by 2. What is if you apply an increment of V D by 2 and minus V D by 2, what will be the total current in M1? Huh? Plus G M V D by 2, G M 1 V D by 2, and this is I naught by 2 minus G M 1 V D by 2, right. What kind of uh, structure is M3 and M4? What is M3 and M4? Huh? M3 and M3 is not current source by any much. It is a current mirror, right. So, if you push this current into a current mirror, what will you get on the other side? Same. So, this is I naught by 2 plus G M 1 V D by 2, okay. So, the current mirror, see the way I got the current mirror was saying, hey, I was wasting the current in M1. So, I will use it to bias it, but it is not only for biasing, even the incremental current is being mirrored. Otherwise, the incremental current would have been wasted right only half of the current would have gone to the output if I had a fixed current source here, but even the incremental current is not wasted it is doubled back here. So, now we have I naught by 2 plus G M 1 V D by 2 I naught by 2 minus G M 1 V D by 2 the difference flows here and that is just G M 1 V D okay. is this fine. Any questions? So, the Norton equivalent of the incremental equivalent of the differential pair the not I mean we have done half the job we have calculated the short circuit current and that is just equal to G M 1 times V D where G M 1 is the transconductance of the differential pair transistors okay at the operating point current of I naught by 2 is okay. So, the result is very simple, but the derivation has to be done correctly. So, that you have some confidence in the results okay. So, now what else is there to be found? Huh? We have to find the output resistance okay. That thing is the same for Thevenin and Norton. Essentially what we have to do is we do not have any uh, incremental input okay. We null the in incremental input the operating point will remain exactly the same and we find the resistance looking back that way okay. What will that be in this case? What will it be? No, I mean I had in this circuit I have not drawn any RDSs anywhere. What is it? 1 by GM of which one? Why? If you set
I said V D to be 0, right. So, what happens to this, what will be this voltage? 0. So, and what will be these currents? So, they will go away. Now, because there is no current here, what is the current in this? What is this current? 0. So, what is this voltage? 0 also, okay. And that 0 voltage is getting multiplied by a G m. So, what is this current? Also 0. So, no current can flow here, okay. I mean, this is not very surprising. If I have modeled the transistor with only a GM and no GDS, what will be the Norton equivalent resistance? Infinite. Okay. If I disable, if I set VGS to zero, this will go away, and I'll have infinite. One. So, if there is no GDS for any of the transistors, the output resistance will be infinite. Okay. The differential pair will behave like an ideal incremental current source. Okay. Control current source. That's all. So, again exactly the same as the transistor except that you do not have gate and source which look different from each other. You have two inputs V 1 and V 2 the gates of M 1 and M 2. The output will be I mean the equivalent will be just a, a voltage control current source of value G M 1 times V D and the incremental resistance will be infinite. Okay. And again not surprising at all if none of the transistors has an incremental output resistance if each of them is a perfect control source you can expect this type of result. Okay. So, now obviously, this is not going to happen in reality. What happens if transistors have output resistances? So, we will have something G D S 3, M 3 and M 4 are identical. So, I will call this also G D S 3 okay? and M 1 and M 2 are identical. I will call this G D S 1. What will be the output resistance or output conductance? Okay, you can calculate it, but again go step by step. First imagine that only the PMOS transistors have a non zero G D S. What will be the output resistance in that case? Yeah, output conductance will just be G D S 3 because of uh, this way all the other current sources will be off. Anyway, please calculate it and verify it. You can also try it with G D S 1. It is actually substantially more messy although the answer is very simple. Okay, Try it out and see. 